Welcome to the Gas Station Cappuccino by Caffeine and Kilos. I am Danny Lear. Next to me, Dean Sidoris. Here we are. We're back. Back. We they haven't done they, one in a couple weeks. They don't know we've been gone. Yeah. We, we're, still, we're still logged up. I think we're still uh, three episodes ahead. Oh, that's good. So, yes, yeah, so we're good to go there. Hey, so I want to, we're going to get straight into something. I've been excited about this for weeks. I've been working it out. We actually haven't done any podcasts because you haven't had this available, whatever I, this is. I really want to show, I really want to do this thing. And yeah. so I haven't, we've been not podcasting until we can do it. And I'm pretty sure after this episode, we're going to buy a more expensive mixer so we can do it the right way in the future. Instead of the, uh, the get it, get it moving, getting it done way, the getting it moving rig. All right. So Larry wheels, power lifter, Larry wheels. You follow him on Instagram. You know who he is? Yes, I do. Larry Wheels might be the strongest human right now. Yeah. Uh, For sure, the strongest like bodybuilder, right? Because he's technically a bodybuilder. Yeah, he does bodybuilding shows for sure. And uh, I think think he does powerlifting meets also. Yeah. I think so. That was uh, Stan Efferding, giving Stan Efferding a run for his money. Yeah. The strongest power or the strongest bodybuilder. (laughs) Everybody's sleeping on Larry Wheels. So there's, so here's the thing about Larry Wheels is if you watch any Larry, so everyone right now, like seriously, I know that it's really bad to tell people to stop listening to your podcast, but like you guys need to pause this, pause this and go on Instagram, look up Larry Wheels, or when it's over, when it's over. Cause you're gonna what look, do you just do for 11 reps on deadlift? Eight, eight, 65 or some shit. When his like nose starts bleeding onto his chest. So check this out. So here's the best thing about the Larry Wheels videos is in every one of them, the guy recording it behind the camera. The hype man. He has the best hype man. In, in the history of lifting weights. And his hype man, actually, his Instagram title is Black Tom Cruise. The Black Tom Cruise. Okay. So if you're watching Larry Wheel's video and you hear someone getting his ass fired up, who you're listening to is Black Tom Cruise. So that's, I... That's a great Instagram name. I listened to it and I was just getting... I was watching it and then what happened is I actually quit watching it and I just played the video about 18 times only listening to the audio. <laughs> Just close your eyes. Right? And so I want to share a little bit of that. Yeah. All right? Let's hear it. All right. We're going to do, do the whole thing. It's less than a minute. Right? But just fire it up. Okay? Oh, yeah. Come on, you monster. Yeah. Come on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on, Larry. Wow. Yeah. Come on, man. Oh. Excuse me, Larry. Oh! <laughs> Excuse me, Larry. <laughs> oh. Yeah! Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> oh! Ah. Perfect. Perfect. So that's the... Uh that's the video that I was just referring to, the deadlift that, video. Yeah, and I like think, eleven reps. I right? think got eleven reps, and it's like eight hundred and sixty-five pounds or some shit, right? And uh, his hype man hyped up the whole way. So it reminded me of old talk radio, because I just wanted to pull out some of them. For example, when he goes, uh, "Come on, you monster! <laughs> Come on, you monster!" <laughs> like, these guys good. are obviously from like Brooklyn, New York. Now, I, what if you're just fired up about something? Give one of these. Oh yeah. <laughs> See, I thought this was wrestling uh, uh, stuff earlier when you played one by mistake. Oh, is that what you thought? Excuse me, Larry. Excuse <laughs> but, that me, is, Larry. but that is incorrect. <laughs> Excuse me, Larry. <laughs> yeah. And then there's a couple. Uh, not only that, you thought that this one oh, yeah. was the way to go, but you have options there. You could also go this guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Two. Oh, yeah. This is fantastic. Yeah. Is, is he? Is he would trained? you? Would you? You said it's fantastic. Would you say that it's a uh, perfect? Yeah. Yeah, I would. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> is this, uh, is he training at the same gym as Oak? I don't know. I feel like that that deadlift video was in the same place. I always see uh, Kevin training. I'm not sure. Could be wrong. Yeah. I'm not sure. I just, I just, uh, I just love this. I don't know why, but I think this oh, is this just is fantastic. fantastic. Yeah. So did you have to, cut, and I thought you would really did like you have to cut these. Yeah. So I went, uh, so I downloaded a, an app mm-hmm. on my computer and I did some audio uh, editing mm. and then I uploaded them here that way. Uh, like I said, anytime we could just drop, drop a, Drop on these bad boys. Excuse me, Larry. Come on, you monster. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So now we have uh, Black Tom Cruise uh, uh, snippets we available got, at all times we can. for all occasions. We can. Absolutely. Isn't that just... Uh, That's great. And so the thing is, uh, with the, the only problem is, though, a little peek behind the scenes for everybody listening, 
on the mixer, the thing is if we, for us to hear them, we got to hit a little button, which then makes it so we can't hear ourselves through the headphones. Which is, uh, it's not, that wasn't that bad. No, it's not that bad. But it's not ideal. No, yeah, it'd probably be better to just not have anything change. Yeah. So I get. So the thing is, I could still hit him on you. Come on, you monster. Call you a monster like I just did, but you don't even know it. Yeah. Or right. we just can't hear each other talk, and then I can Come say on, you monster. Yeah. anytime, and we're good to go. So we'll we're uh, or we get a, a more expensive mixer. Yeah, we got to tell uh, Black Tom Cruise about this. Oh, absolutely. And Larry Wheeler. I bet he would love this shit. Yeah. Do not know him personally. He might yeah. hate it. But uh, it's, uh, I think, I mean, I don't know. Like I said, do you see why I've been so fired up? No, this is great. I like this. Worth the wait? This is a good, oh yeah, for sure. This is a good addition. It's a nice little, yeah, nice little something. It is good. Hilarious. Yeah. So uh, if you guys like that, let us know. Try out some new stuff on the podcast. Uh, so email us, podcast at caffeineandkilos.com. Let us know if you think, uh, if you like it, let us, just let us know. If you Like, you can say a couple things, you know what I mean? Like, maybe you say, oh man. Okay, it's perfect. Yeah, yeah. Or, or maybe you drop one of these, you go like, eh, you know what? I'd rather you not. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's kind of, it's going to be one of those things. So just kind of let us know what's going on. And maybe, maybe just every three, four episodes, we just run the whole thing through. Because that, like, I just can't get enough of that. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll, find, we'll find time to use them all, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm talking to search them. hard. No, no, no. Uh, so, yeah, so there we go. Very cool. I like that. Yeah. Nice little new uh, new feature to the podcast. Well, you know, I kind of figured out. I was thinking about doing it and talking. I was trying to work a way to where we could hear that and ourselves at the same time. This whole kind of thing. And then I realized, you know what? It's just time to uh, it's basically it's time to shit or get off the pot. Yeah. It's like a talk radio show now. You know, the... Uh, it's the old natural. It's the Don... Uh, the, the Don. The Dan Levitard show. Dan Levitard. Yeah. Dan, Dan Patrick. Dan Patrick. See, you gotta have a Dan a cut Patrick. You gotta have the first name Dan to be. Oh, don't ignore that. Oh, I thought that was another one of the buttons. No, what, <laughs> there is actually uh, a few built-in ones that are like. Uh, here, let me uh, let me get you on these real quick. Uh, huh? A little baseball. Or uh, ESPN thirty for thirty. It was that time when I realized. What if I told you? That the diamond wasn't the only shape in this scandal. <laughs> <laughs> You'd layer them. You know what I mean? Maybe layer them. I don't know. And then there was a drum beat one, too, that I had deleted on accident. So don't worry about that one. If no one says anything funny, so we don't really need the whole drum roll. We don't need that. You know? Uh, a minute ago, I said, time to shit or go off the pot. And I realized, uh, I don't, I'm not sure exactly what that means. You know what I mean? Like, you either do something or you don't, right? But I feel like either way you choose, you're like, okay, it's time to shit or get off the pot. Like, maybe get off the pot. Like, maybe that was a decision. You know what I mean? Well, I think it's, I think the, it's intentions is to be like, either do something or, or move on. Mm. Like, either shit or get off the toilet and go do something. Something else. Besides trying to shit. You know, obviously it's not happening. Modern day, you're sitting on the toilet. You're on your phone. You know what I mean? So, getting off the pot is actually stopping what you're doing. Do you, uh feel like anger or like upset if you go to take a shit and you forget your phone it's a weird thing it's like dude now what am i gonna do well i'm just gonna sit here with my own thoughts for the next yeah. for the next two minutes yeah it's a weird thing yeah that's a it's, yeah it's, it's a weird thing it's like, oh god damn it for my phone are you serious <laughs> well i guess i'll start reading the uh toilet paper roll yeah uh caution uh, it may cause cancer if you use this toilet paper roll. Well, hopefully there is a toilet paper roll. Because the other the other morning, I came in nice and early. Yeah. I was heading out to Cal Strength. Mm-hmm. Okay. Hey, Aaron was going with me. We're going to film some of their NFL combine prep stuff. Mm-hmm. And I was going to, we're going to bring the guys some stuff. So it's completely out of my, it's the opposite direction from where I live that the warehouse is. So I drive up, I leave my house 5 a.m., drive up to the warehouse to box up, to grab a, to grab a box, which wasn't ready, so I made it, no problem, don't mind doing that, box and stuff up. Well, I figure I got up, drank some coffee, drove for 45 minutes, I'm out of the car and box things up, I get half the box done, and it's time. Yep, it's time to go. Now, things are happening. Mm -hmm. Things are progressing rapidly. Mm -hmm. So I go in the bathroom, open the door, look over, uh, where well, there's two toilet paper holders, both empty. Mm -hmm. Right, out, mm -hmm. no toilet paper. That's an ideal situation. Shit. Okay. So I'm going, all right, well, uh, paper towels. 
Don't see any paper towels. Maybe there's paper towels in the kitchen. Why the door to the bathroom is off the kitchen, that's a whole nother, that's a terrible design. Yeah. Major design flaw there. Anyway, so I go in the kitchen, and I, I, oh, there's the roll. I see it. There is the roll of toilet paper that appears to be empty. And I look, and not empty. There is one remaining sheet of paper towel. So there was almost nothing around at all. And the sheet of paper towel that was on there is the last one, so it's half glue. Yeah. It's covered in like that glue. It's like that hard, stiff, glue-soaked paper towel. Yeah. Not soft at all. No. And it's it's one it's like a half sheet. So I got like half a sheet of gluey paper towel. And I'm like, well, it's this or I'm driving around the rest of the day with one sock. Yeah. You know? Or check the other bathroom. Right. We have another bathroom. Yeah. yeah. At the time, didn't even think about that. Yeah. I was, uh, it was more of like, I wasn't sure if I was going to make it to the kitchen for the paper towel back in time. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, so things were progressing rapidly. Mm -hmm. Things were moving right along. So I take the one, the last sheet of paper towel that's all glue, gluey. And now I'm thinking too, like, man, I don't, like, don't want to plug the toilet. Like, third, but it's like, I only had the one sheet anyway. Anyway, so that was that. Handled business and then uh, moved along. Yeah, it's funny, the bathroom that never gets used ha is the only bathroom at HQ that has a paper towel rack mm. and uh, always overstocked on toilet paper. I think it's time. I think it's time to get a paper towel holder. Yeah, or we just take off the one that's in that bathroom out there that never gets used. Mm. Yeah. Well, yeah, because we, we, actually what we're doing now is we have to go in between the bathroom and kitchen depending on where the roll is, to wash your, wash your hands of any kind of liquid or... Correct, because since there are not... It goes back and forth. Since there are not paper towel holders, there's no real place for it. So and it bounces so, back. So instead of like open, instead of putting one in each room, when one runs out, you just grab one from the other because there's nothing holding it there. Uh, how much do you think we could get a paper towel holder for on Amazon? I bet we could go in for six ninety five. Oh, I'm going to say three ninety nine. Paper towel holder? Oh, well, if we're talking Prime, though, well, i got to factor in the Prime... Uh, upcharge to uh, mm. I'm gonna say five ninety nine or four ninety nine even I'll even go four ninety nine. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look right now. Paper towel holder. What did I say? Six ninety five. Uh, come on, give me the cheap plastic. Seven ninety eight. Love us so far. And uh, yes, uh, six twenty three. Six twenty three. That's the kind I was visioning in my head when I was Cheap thinking about plastic. the cheapest one. Yeah. We, could, we could probably swing that. We could probably just leave that one in the bathroom that's there and just get, get a couple more. That's the exact same one I think that's in there. In the bathroom outside. <laughs> that exact? How'd they get online? Oh, same model. Same model. Oh, okay. Yeah, same, same. same design. It's got the plastic that folds into itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Two screws. Yeah. Some uh, anchors that are just going to fall out of the wall. <laughs> when you're yanking on it. Yeah. It's yeah. totally uh, structural integrity is completely a uh, non-factor. Dude, absolutely. Um, I uh, oh one episode I don't remember what episode was I did a uh, did a book review. Mm hmm. I'm ready for another one. Okay. Okay. Not will be a pretty quick one, but it was, it was good. So the book uh, Elon Musk. Okay. It's a famous author. Yeah, the, the, the book is Elon Musk. It's about Elon Musk, but it's written, it's biography, and it's by Ashley Vance. Okay. I've done zero research. Kind of like the rest of this show. There's zero research or preparation other than me reading the book. So I, I actually don't know if Ashley Vance is a male or female. I'm going to go with female. No. E-E-A-S-H-L-E-E. -E 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 -E. Hmm, could be a guy. Yeah, yeah, hard to say. Normally, you kind of tell them the tone of the book. I feel like the L Y is mostly girls. Yeah, I think it might be a guy. I'm not sure. Anyway, sorry, Ashley. So, uh, basically, the author decides to write a book on Elon Musk and everything he's doing. Right? I mean, we're talking Solar City, SpaceX, Tesla, uh, and there's a few other things also. The Hyperloop thing. Mm -hmm. um, he was one of the founders of PayPal. He also believes in the Matrix theory. He also perhaps believes in the Matrix Theory. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I was like, oh, so I've heard it's really good. It's really good for leadership lessons and just like, you know, owning companies and that type of stuff. Oh, yeah, sounds good. It'll, it'll be interesting, if nothing else, you know? And so apparently, I just like this part is uh, it starts off talking about it. The author's going to write the book and meets the Elon and says, hey, I'm going to write this book on you or sends a message. Uh, you know, can we do some interviews? And the guy said, nah, Elon said, no, 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 thanks. Uh, lose my number. 
right? Basically. Yeah. So the author said, all right, no problem. Do it anyway. And went and interviewed every, like, ex-employee that's ever worked for him. Like, all of his childhood, like, friends and cousins. And basically talked to everybody. So then that's, like, 18 months, two years later. So he got the real story. So he's doing that. And then 18 months or so later, Elon says, you know, so it seems like you're just going to be doing this thing anyway. So might as well get my fucking side of things. And said, how about this? How about, it's all good. You can have full access. We can do interviews. The whole thing. Just, uh, before you publish it, I just want, I just need to write, like, uh, Footnotes, I can just add in footnotes to things, right? Like my side of the story. And the author said, eh, it's not really going to work because I don't want you to add 150 pages of this fucking thing of footnotes, you know? And so then eventually over the course of a dinner, Elon's like, all right, well, let's just do it. So it's, it's cool because you get the interviews with Elon Musk himself, but you also get all, it's not like he had somebody write this story. Someone else is doing it anyway. Mm -hmm. And he just eventually obliged to help out because... Like, why would you not want your side of everything to be heard? Once you realize they're following through with it, you're better off probably just doing the interviews, you know? Yeah. So anyway. Which guy's not backing down. No. And uh, so anyway, really interesting. Few things did not know. Um, so SpaceX, it's fucking crazy. Basically, the entire thing is, is that Elon Musk, his whole goal is he wants to colonize Mars. Mm -hmm. And he thinks mankind is going to come to an end if we just stay on Earth here. We're not going to make it. The way, the way we're destroying the planet and whatnot. And he's been a sci-fi nerd since he was a kid. And so he's like, we need to learn to colonize other planets if human, if mankind is going to survive. So that's his goal. Mm -hmm. And that's why he founded, and that's why he's like, made a company to start building rockets, SpaceX, getting people to space. They now uh, are the cheapest uh, rockets that shoot off satellites or uh, take astronauts to the space station mm -hmm. and supplies the space station. Well, turned that. in, that's turned into a uh, well, independent uh, business now. It's a whole thing. And then there's the... the well, whole, mass is too expensive. The whole Tesla. And it's just... Anyway, it was... Uh, I would say if you at all, if anyone is at all interested in people and quirky people, you know, great read. And also great for leadership. It talks about the way he... Just, uh, it's inspiring that he basically he sees things or wants to do things and everybody tells him it's a terrible fucking idea everybody goes nah that's not going to work because of this no that's not going to work because of that whatever let's so talk about going up against industry giants like you're competing directly against boeing you know and nasa well, right? it's also competing against ford chevy that's, that's what I'm, and they a whole toyota thing. So honda spacex like you're t talking about going up against like boeing and nasa right and then in the the car sector it's like the last successful car company startup was in like the 1930s, it was Chrysler, was the last American car manufacturer that would, had any success. So you're going against GM and this whole deal, you know? And He actually has an advantage against NASA since NASA is a government-owned entity right. that they have limitations on what they can do. Yeah. As far as like whatever money they have is what all they can do, where he can do whatever the hell he wants. And same thing with like launching that whole deal. It's like something's like they set up systems because they're, you know, it's a bunch of computer engineers and stuff. So if something uh, right before or like 30 minutes prior to launch, something's not quite right. NASA like shut the whole thing down, get it fixed. They'll launch three months later. Whereas what they'll do is SpaceX, something's wrong. If they can fix, if it's like a computer error or something like that, they can fix. They'll just bang it out, fix it right now and just go through with the launch. Stuff like that. And like if it's fixed, it's fixed, you know. But th there's not all the red tape. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So anyway. Well, NASA, highly does, recommend NASA doesn't have the best track record. No. So no. maybe they should be taking those three months of... Uh, maybe, yeah. Of, yeah. Well, that's just one of those things. Like, that's why it's so crazy, too, that private company, you can do it. You know what I mean? Talking about... Well, let's, also, like, let's look at how many times NASA has launched compared to how many times Tesla has launched, launched anything. Exactly. So it's like the, the, the stats are skewed. Like, oh, well, yeah, but, we, we've launched 150 right. times and we've had one or two mistakes. Right. You've launched, like... Ten times. These are I all bullshit couple. numbers, and right. and nothing's gone wrong yet. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, and that's what's interesting. Also, is the whole launch schedule is SpaceX now. Like they're basically firing off a rocket uh, every other month, and they're going to start doing it every month. Wow. Whereas NASA would never be able to make that clip. Their goal is they want to shoot off like multiple in a day. They want to be able to like just hammer them out. So it's pretty wild. Also, they're launching for like sixty between sixty and ninety million dollars, which is like a fraction of what the cost of uh, I think it's like three times is what like NASA char like would, would uh, pay to have something like that done. At a minimum of three times that. We also got like, and, they, and especially they have like how many more employees, you know, NASA that they're pay like people are yeah, getting paid to do like micro things. Who knows? You know what I mean? Like yeah. there's probably so much money wasted. Yeah. 
through NASA because there's just like so many protocols and so many people have to go through so many things. It's like one person does yep. every little piece where it doesn't necessarily have to be that way, but then it's also like government jobs that you can't really fire people from and stuff like that. You know, it's trip too. It's like it's the certain times where uh, like basically SpaceX and Tesla are both kind of at a crossroads. Like both companies, neither one was currently profitable, but both had all these things going on. And Elon dumped basically literally every penny of his money into it. Like he he was not taking a check. And it's funny. It's hard to feel bad for a guy who, you know, like hundreds of millions of dollars. But when he literally put every dime into the companies, and it was at one point, it was like on a on a Tuesday, and he was like, next Friday was payroll, and I could not meet payroll, like nothing, and like nothing out of his personal, like absolutely nothing. And he straight told his wife, he's like, we will move in with your parents in the basement before like we give up on them. whatever. And then some things came through like last minute and was able to like pay people. But I mean, talk about putting it all on the line, going from literally hundreds of millions of dollars in the bank to like nothing. Yeah. Like, okay, a week from Friday, we will be like in debt, zero anything, companies worthless, fucking bankrupt, like all gone. All right, let's roll the dice. Yeah. Let's run it. And that's why he's in the position he's in. Yeah, dude. So anyway, that was cool. It was good. Uh, so out of 10, seven, which is good. That's good. Yeah, I'm still, I still highly disagree with your uh Cowboy Coffee rating, but <laughs> that'll be it for another day. Yeah, Cowboy Coffee. So uh, you I feel like that's some of the best coffee I've ever had. Boil the water, dump the grounds in. It was delicious. It was good. Like, I really think it was like, I can't imagine a time I've had better, like, regular home brewed coffee. Really? Yeah. You I like thought it, it was fantastic. You like it better than a French press? I feel like it tasted equally as good. But I'd give French press the same rating. Mm, yeah. Only time I'm gonna give anything like higher than like an eight on like as far as a brewing, it had to be something very unique with like maybe some kind of added flavor. I don't know what it would be. Yeah. Cause like, what's a 10? Like I don't just throw out 10s. Perfect. Perfect. Like, what would that be? Perfect. I don't know. Yeah. It had to be a whole thing. It had to be like some kind of, I don't know. Maybe one day we'll come across one. A perfect 10? Yeah, perfect 10. There is that. This isn't the slam dunk contest where every other dunk's a a perfect 10. What a fucking awful thing. It's just like, who just gives out 10s like that? Well, I just got, you know what it is, man. You don't move on to the next round unless you get a perfect 10. You know why? I can tell like, you. What happened? I can tell you why. I can tell you why. Because the contest is fucking boring. This year's was pretty entertaining. Nah, I disagree. But it wasn't like... Uh, I, thought it, I thought it was terrible. That's why I didn't watch it. Well, the problem is now, though, is it's not necessarily that the dunks are bad. It's that we just don't give a shit about the people doing them. Well, you know what else? It's that... What like what impressive dunk is someone going to do that hasn't been done? I think that's the thing, is that it's just it's just so like at this point kind of seen it all. All these dunks are pretty pretty new, pretty fresh. Yeah, see, I, I I'm basing my strong opinion off not watching one second of it. Yeah, I can tell. Because yeah. <laughs> it was actually pretty good. Was it? I just don't. Yeah, I just don't have any. Uh, I just don't have any connection to any of the players. Yeah. Which was for me was what made it not as interesting as like yeah. let's say like Michael Jordan and yeah. like fucking Magic Johnson like those like those guys doing Vince dunk contest yeah and Vince Carter and like why not uh, you know LeBron James or somebody like that's what we really want to see about eight years ago when the Golden State Warriors were absolutely fucking atrocious uh, Jason Richardson two time yeah. yeah. dunk champ yeah. and it was great because that's what everyone hung their hat on. Ah, you know, he won like 35 games this year. But see, Jay Rich win the dunk contest? Hell yeah. yeah. Like about Highlight of the know? season? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Highlight of the season. Man, it must be nice to get 35 wins in a season. I don't even know what that's like. <laughs> the the uh, Kings not. Oh, God. They haven't. They broke 30 like two years ago with Cousins, and like that was like a big deal. Really? It's just been so bad. Man, dang. What's the, what's the lowest? You know what like the lowest number of wins in the NBA is right now? Or like for a season? Like what's the record low for a season? I would assume like 15 games probably. That's what I was thinking. Like some, you, like, you got to just like fuck around and win. Well, now, now we have this huge problem in the NBA where everybody's literally just tanking on purpose and yeah. everybody's admitting it now. Yeah. They've always been doing it, but now it's like you got, Straight what's up. his name on the Cavs? Oh, not the Cavs, the uh, Mavericks. The Mavericks was basically coming out and saying like, yeah, we're tanking this year. They fined him $600,000 for saying that. <laughs> What's his name? What's that guy's name? Yeah, Cuban. Shark Tank. Yeah, Mark Cuban. Mark Cuban. Mark Cuban, like on a podcast, said that they're going to tank this year intentionally. Oh, that's what we're doing. And then they find him six hundred thousand dollars. Is there any, like who who do they want in the draft? I, I don't. I, I don't think it matters. Anybody, I think everybody's going to be good. Like anybody's better than what we got. Yeah. 
Like, if you're getting a top draft pick, like, it's going to help you somehow. If you're getting a top five and you don't pick, uh, you know, some seven, eight guy out of Lithuania, as long as you stay away from that and just pick someone who played some NCAA, top mm -hmm. five pick, you're probably going to be okay. Yeah. Is that kind of how it goes? Yeah, unless you pick, uh, uh, what's his name for the Knicks? Everybody was all Porzingis. Excited about Porzingis. He's an outlier, though. That guy. And everybody was just hating on the Knicks for picking him. Like, yeah. oh, you guys don't know what the hell you're but doing. We've been rough. It's been rough ride. And then all of a sudden they pick him and he works out. And they're like, yeah, that was such a good call. He's, he's one of my favorite players to watch. He's great. He's so much fun. Well, he's a modern example of like a, uh, a new big man. Yeah. You got to be able to shoot threes. You got to be able to dribble. Mm -hmm. And you got to be able to just like play like a forward. That's just the way it is. Yeah. There's no such thing. What is there's? Uh, basically, there is no more center in the NBA. The last center, or there's no more powerful. The last NBA. center in the NBA is uh, Dwight Howard. Yeah, and uh, there's a few. You get like what's Steve, his name? Steven Adams. What's his name from uh, Clippers? DeAndre Jordan. DeAndre Jordan. You know what it is? I think. I think there are some. You know what it is? I think there's no. That's like the end of them. No one's picking up any new ones. I think the power. What is the power forward position? Just gone. Yeah. Center, like you'll get some guys still like the Steven Adams, like that, whatever. But they're just no set. You're either a small forward or maybe you're a, or a center. That's it. I don't know. Yeah, I feel like the centers is eventually just not even going to be like even like or talked about. It's not a position. It's just gonna yeah. It's just gonna be like the next phase of basketball. It just really yeah. isn't going to be centers. Everybody has to be able to dribble. Everybody has to be able to shoot. The days of like Shaquille and Neal's are just dead. Yeah. Shaq. Dad. It doesn't exact. It just doesn't. You can't just sit under the hoop. In the three second zone anymore, man, that's unfortunate. Because wow. I because I can't shoot to save my life. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, I'm awful. We'll see. I don't know. NBA is interesting now. It's just a completely offensive game. Yeah, which some people think is offensive. Yeah, it's. I mean, what do you want though? Yeah, I know people want to see score. Yeah, like I don't. I don't necessarily see the issue entirely. Like, I don't want them to, like, not try. Bunch I want to see, like, an awesome blocker or a good steal like everybody else. But, like, I'm not trying to watch, like, someone pass the ball 40 times for it to them to just lose it. Bunch of guys out there just swinging meat. Yeah, not good. Yeah. Slinging uh, brass. Just swinging, swinging meat. Just out there just, yeah, just swinging meat. You know what I mean? Man, I'm going to head up the hill and sling some brass. Probably head home swing some meat. <laughs> Walk in the gym. What are you, oh, I'm just here to. Uh, I'm here to jack some steel, swing some meat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Sounds. Your yeah. locker's over there. Yeah, Jack. Uh, and, uh, towels are in the towels are in the back. The steel. Yeah. It just uh, seems like a. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. It's uh. We got we got some uh. Got some reviews on iTunes. Let's hear them. Well, I didn't I didn't print the written ones. I just went the overall like how many five star. Because okay. I noticed we had like forty reviews. Okay. No shit. Yeah. Oh, no, no. Sorry. Sorry. 35. Okay. 35 reviews. Getting anybody to review anything these days is a fucking, is an accomplishment. Well, so we've released, I think, uh, 12 episodes now. 12 episodes. So, you know, 35 reviews, 12 episodes. It's not bad. Oh, man. I've, I follow some podcasts I've been on for a while that don't have that. Maybe 110 reviews. They've it, been around for 10 years. If you enjoy listening to Gas Station Cappuccino podcast, please go on iTunes and give us a review. Or if you don't. Or if you don't listen, review it anyway, like I did with the dump contest. Exactly. <laughs> you know? Just completely uh, uneducated, uninterested yep. opinion. Yes. And the most important thing about that is when you when you make that opinion and you make a statement about something you know nothing about, really important, do you fucking dig in. Yeah. Heels down. You know what I mean? It's uh, it's less easy. It's uh, it's more difficult to be persuaded the other way. You just hunker down. You just hunker down. Saddle up and just fight tooth and nail something you have no clue about. <laughs> That's ideal. That's ideal. Absolutely. And then what happens about 10, 15 minutes in, you just go, yeah, I guess you're right. All right. I'm going to have to listen and find out. It happens all the time. All the time. But you have no idea what you're talking about. Doesn't matter. That's right. That's right. Don't need to. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> Exactly. Um, so, with those reviews, though, I did make this little note. I noticed out of 35 reviews, we have 34 five stars. No shit. Yeah. 
and then one three star review. Okay. What does that one say? Does fuck? What the fuck's that guy? I don't know. Didn't say anything. Maybe he's expecting it to be something that uh, we're not intending it to be. You know what? You know what it is? Confusion. You know what it is? Podcast confusion. I can tell you what it is. It's my wife. <laughs> it's Jess. It's Jess. It could be It could be a joint Kelsey-Jess account. They probably team. Just a no. troll account. Let me tell you, if we had two three-star reviews, no question. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely no question. Not this shit again. Yeah. I have to live with this. I hear you talk all the time. Do we have anything what it said about the review? No. It did, that one didn't have a right. There's about, I think there's 12 or so where there's a couple sentences, you know, like actual written reviews, and but there's 35 just star reviews. Okay. Like five star, okay. five star, whatever. You know? So anyway, if you enjoy Gas Stage Cappuccino, please go leave us a review. Yeah. That's please. It. Please do. Well, you know what they say. Win in Rome. When in Rome, gotta swing that brass. Yeah, swing that brass. You swing, know what I mean? Sling that brass. All right. Hey, hey uh, I think that's it for today. We're a little over, well, about 30 minutes in. Yeah. 25 or so, 30. Now, today, if you go to the gym, make sure you let everybody know. I'm sure to, uh, I'm sure to jack some steel. Yeah. I'm here to catch the vibe and feel C the steel. Feel the steel, catch the vibe. All right. If I ever were to walk into a new gym, Oh. And a coach of Dude. some sort asked me like uh, what my goals are. I would just look at him in the face, swear to God, and I would just be like, you know what, honestly? I'm just trying to catch the vibe and feel some steel. <laughs> what, what would you say if someone like said that to you? I'd be like, you know what? I'm happy you came here because that's what we're all about. That's, yeah, <laughs> if someone looked me in the face and said, like, oh, dude, I'm just here to, to catch the vibe and feel the steel. I should be like, fuck yeah. Dude, like me, you know what, man? I'd look in the eyes, I'd say, me too. Welcome, welcome aboard. You know what happened? We'd, uh, it'd actually be kind of awkward because I think we'd probably have a moment. You know, like moment. one of those things where you're just like, I, like you're just, I, it's like standing there, never met the dude before, we're like 18 inches apart and just staring each other in the eyes. It's like, holy shit. Man, this guy, this guy he, gets it. He gets me. He gets it. He gets it and me. <laughs> he, yeah, you know what I mean? And later, Maybe you can get it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> Maybe we can go sling some brass. <laughs> That's it. All right. Thank you for listening to the Gas Stage Cappuccino. If you at all enjoyed any part of this, you know what I mean? Maybe you got fired up. Maybe you liked uh, hearing about Elon Musk. Maybe you just uh, really were into, uh, I don't know, into this type of thing. All right. There we go. Maybe to that. If you thought this episode was... Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anyway, let us know. Uh, let us know what you think about the whole thing. Podcast at Caffeine and Kilos, where you can reach us. Also on iTunes, please go leave a review for us. Give us however many stars you deem necessary. Hopefully, it's more than uh, more than my wife did. Yeah. All right, guys. Threes and up. Threes and up. All right. Until next time. This is Gas Station, Station Cappuccino. Cappuccino. Oh, oh, shit, Dean. You're going to the Arnold this weekend. We got to go to A&P real quick. Oh, dude, the suicide? The suicide. <laughs> when I get back. Someone tagged us Instagram video of doing a uh, ca cappuccino suicide. At Bullshit. Cassidy. Swear to God. Bullshit. Someone, swear to God, somebody tagged us and it said, gas, it, said uh, it said suicide and it showed him filling up cappuccino and he went over the next one, hit the button. Oh, my God. I got to find that. Yeah. You got to show me that when we get off. All right. All right. Later, guys. See ya.